Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics and today we are going to be looking at the nitrogen cycle but we're going to do it a little bit differently. A lot of what's on the internet is done by hobbyists and that's awesome but we're going to approach it from a microbiological perspective so if you don't know uh, I teach microbiology, biology at the college level. I have a master's degree in biotechnology and chemical science. I recently completed a graduate certificate in aquaculture and fish health and so I want to approach this subject at a more detailed level. So if you're just looking for the basics, this may not be the video for you. If you've got an emergency right now, so you've got an ammonia problem or a nitrite problem and your fish are in bad health, this will help you understand why, but it's not going to help you understand how to fix that problem. So what I would recommend is in the description, I've got two videos, one, how to lower ammonia. The second one is how to lower nitrite. Stop watching this go to those videos that's what's going to help you in the immediate short term to keep your fish from dying but what we're going to do here today is we're going to look at the complete nitrogen cycle and so often what we see on the internet especially as it relates to the fish keeping hobby is we go from ammonia to nitrite to nitrate well it's a cycle there's a whole nother part that we're missing and so I want to talk about that as well, and I want to put more meat into why the nitrogen cycle happens. We're really going to understand it. It's going to be science-y. It's, it's going to be a little bit difficult to understand at times, but if you're having problems understanding it, I highly encourage you, take the video in chunks. Watch a little bit. When you understand that, come back to the next part. That's perfectly fine, and that's okay. So stay tuned. What we're going to do is I'm going to bust out the whiteboard. I'm going to show you the cycle. We're going to explain it. Now, why do we talk about it? Well, in nature, it's vitally important to keeping our aquatic systems up and running and healthy, to keep a balance. In the aquarium hobby, as you can see behind me, we've got lots of fish tanks. It's vital to keeping our pet fish healthy. And so, as I've already mentioned, if you go out and you buy fish and you have a tank that is brand new and everything was sterile, within a couple weeks, you're usually going to have problems if you've added fish right away. So today we're going to look at the nitrogen cycle in a lot more detail, so stay tuned. Alright everyone, so what we're looking at here is the nitrogen cycle. I know it looks complicated. There's a lot of arrows, there's a lot of words, a lot of sciencey sounding words, but what we're going to do is we're going to take it slow, we're going to take it one step at a time, and we're going to get through it, and at the end of this you're going to understand the nitrogen cycle much better than when we started. So I think the logical place to start when we talk about the nitrogen cycle is right here with nitrogen gas. So you may be surprised to learn that every breath you take is about 78% nitrogen. But we don't do really anything with it. It's not something we can use to build stuff in our bodies. In fact, the vast majority of living things, they don't do anything with the nitrogen in the atmosphere. What does? Cyanobacteria. And so cyanobacteria is a major player in fixing nitrogen. And what that means is we start with nitrogen and we turn it into something else. And so we may have heard of fixing nitrogen, fixing carbon. Ultimately, that means taking that nitrogen and carbon and incorporating it into an organic material. Organic means carbon-based. And so what we have here is the cyanobacteria that take the nitrogen out of the atmosphere, out of an aquatic system, and turn it into this, which is ammonium or ammonia. This is a building block for all other nitrogen-based compounds. So what does ammonia do? Ammonia forms the amino part of an amino acid. Amino acids make proteins. And what does protein do? Protein is involved in structure of cells. It's involved in receiving signals. It's involved in enzymatic reactions. So there are lots of things that proteins do. In fact, if you were to look at the dry weight of an individual cell, often, the dry weight is over 50% protein. Now, what we see here is that the ammonia or ammonium can be taken in by certain organisms like plants and fungi and types of bacteria and incorporated into amino acids, and that's what builds structure. So they form a foundation in the food chain. One of the reasons why is now other organisms can eat those plants or algae or fungi and get amino acids from them. And if we're talking about an aquatic system, fish can eat smaller fish, and that's how they get their proteins. But here's the thing. All organisms, as they produce nitrogen-based compounds, they also break that stuff down. 
And so they release nitrogen-based compounds, waste products, and that's what we see here. Now, for us human beings, the nitrogenous waste products that we produce come out in our urine. And that's really due to the breakdown of amino acids, the transferring of amino groups from one amino acid to another, using certain proteins as a source of energy. All organisms have nitrogen-based waste products. For fish in an aquatic environment, often that nitrogen-based waste product is going to be ammonia or ammonia. And you may be surprised to learn that a lot of that ammonia is actually secreted through the gills. So here's the problem. I recently saw an email from a major pet supplier, pet store, and the email said something like this. You can purchase an aquarium and get it started in three easy steps. Step one, you pick out your tank. Step two, you pick out your decoration. Step three, you wait 24 hours and you put your fish in. That is a great way to kill your new fish. And here's why. If you have an aquarium and you put in sterile gravel, so brand new gravel, brand new sterile plants, maybe they're plastic plants, decorations, and maybe your filter media is brand new, like that filter floss or the carbon, that's all brand new. There's no bacteria coating those surfaces. That's a big deal because we need bacteria to complete this nitrogen cycle as we're going to see. So what the fish do initially is they produce a lot of ammonia through their gills. That ammonia starts to build up in a fish tank and without the beneficial bacteria there, that ammonia can build up and become toxic. Ammonia toxicity often presents in fish that are at the surface of the water. They're trying to get oxygen, so they're gulping for oxygen at the surface. That's called piping. They may look like they're you know, laying on their side on the bottom of the tank, and that's all a result of ammonia. Now, ammonia more or less suffocates fish. It destroys their gill tissue. The fish are no longer able to get oxygen. They die from suffocation. Now, after a few weeks, that ammonia can be broken down, or we say it's been oxidized into nitrite. Well, what does that mean? It's a fancy word. It's a science word. And so what I want us to think about when you hear the word oxidize, think food source, electron source. One of the things that I explain to my students as we go through energy metabolism and biochemical cycles like this is all living things need to be able to extract electrons and protons from food sources. And eventually, later on, they need to be able to get rid of those electrons and protons that they use. So what we're doing here, when you see the term oxidize or oxidation, I want you to think food source or electron source. So what we're saying is that there is a genus of bacteria called Nitrosomus, and that genus of bacteria, instead of eating proteins or carbohydrates like we do, they eat ammonia. And that ammonia supplies them with electrons and protons so that they can make ATP, which is used as energy inside of cells. So this bacteria uses the ammonia and as a waste product produces something called nitrite. And that's what we see here. So what happens in a fish tank, in an aquatic system, in a closed system like we'd have here, is the ammonia levels, they start to go up. And your fish feel the effects of that ammonia toxicity but then they start to go down as we get more nitrous ammonia built up in the tank and taking that ammonia, oxidizing it, using it as an electron source or a food source and producing nitrite. Now, unfortunately, the nitrite is also toxic for fish. It also prevents them from obtaining oxygen, although it's a little bit different in what it does. And then what we see over time is the ammonia starts to go down and nitrite levels start to go up as the ammonia is converted to nitrite. Again, also toxic. Luckily, there is a second genus of bacteria, we see here, nitrobacter, and that genus of bacteria is capable of oxidizing the nitrite and turning it into nitrate. If you think about it, it's kind of gross, right? You've got a waste product from nitrosomonas that's then being used as an electron source by nitrobacter, that organism takes the electrons out of nitrite, uses that energy to produce ATP, which can do work inside of cells, and then we're left with nitrate. Now, often this is where the nitrogen cycle story ends, but we need to go on. And so the nitrate here, 
We control that in a couple of different ways in the aquatic, uh, in the aquarium hobby. Way number one is you do water changes. And so ideally you'd want to keep these nitrate levels down to about 20 parts per million or less. You'll know that if you get a nitrate testing kit. In fact, they have testing kits for ammonia, for nitrite, and for nitrate. All right, and so all of those things, uh, you can test for those. You can use strips, you can use liquid test kits. So one of the things that you can do is you can test for nitrates. And this is kind of important because we get these questions sometimes, how often and how much water should I change? This is your answer right here, nitrate levels. If your nitrate levels are going above 20 parts per million, time to do a water change. How much water do you change? Enough so that you can keep your nitrates at 20 parts per million or less. That's the goal. The other way that you can control nitrates in an aquatic system is by adding plants, real plants, not fake ones. Uh, so if you add live plants, they use the nitrates as fertilizer. In fact, both ammonia and nitrates can be used as fertilizer in agriculture. And we see here, nitrates being used to make organic materials. And so the plants will pull nitrates out of a system. Unfortunately, if nitrate levels become high enough, that's also food for algae. So if you're having an algae problem or a bacterial bloom, this may be to blame, your nitrate levels. If they're getting high, the algae's like, well, I got a lot of food, you're leaving the lights on, I'm gonna make a lot more cells. So this is the general cycle. We've got ammonia to nitrite to nitrate. One other thing, when it comes to ammonia, often I get asked the question, my ammonia levels are this, it, is it too high? Or my ammonia levels are at a certain level, is that dangerous? It's not that simple. Straight up ammonia, and what the testing kits do is they measure total ammonia, nitrogen. And you need more information than that. Uh, the types of ammonia that are really toxic are the unionized ammonias, UIA. All right, so unionized ammonia is the stuff that is really dangerous to fish. That is controlled in part by the temperature and the pH of your aquatic environment. So just knowing that there's ammonia in the aquatic system doesn't necessarily mean that you have a problem. You have to know other things as well. So it's not necessarily an easy question to answer without those two pieces of information. Okay, so we've covered the top. So just to do a quick review, we started with ammonia. That was a waste product from our fish. They released that into the aquatic system. It's going to take some time, but eventually nitrous simonis shows up on the scene. And that nitrous simonis oxidizes the ammonia. Again, uses it as an electron source or a food source. And when it does that, it produces nitrite. That nitrite is also a food source, but it's a food source for nitrobacter that oxidizes it, pulls electrons out of it. We wind up with nitrate. In the next part, we're going to talk about this bottom area. All right, what happens here? All right, so now let's talk about this other half. This is the part that sometimes gets left out. Uh, what we're looking at here, we're got, we've got nitrate. That was the stuff that eventually built up in the tank. We're doing our water changes to bring that back down. Maybe we add live plants. That brings it back down as well. But there's another thing going on here. So you may have heard some advanced hobbyists, or if you're a student, you may have heard of this idea of an anaerobic environment. So we human beings, when we consume energy, we get the electrons, we get the protons out of our food sources like carbohydrates. We use it to make ATP, which does work inside of a cell. Now the question is, what do we do about the electrons and protons that we've obtained? We can't store them forever. The answer, oxygen. We breathe in oxygen and that oxygen is what is known as a terminal electron acceptor. Terminal means end. So at the very end of the process of making ATP, the oxygen gets into our cells and takes the electrons and protons away. A lot of people think that oxygen is converted to CO2. That's not true at all. Oxygen, after it picks up electrons, after it picks up protons, is actually converted to water. It's called metabolic water. There are actually organisms on this earth that don't drink water. All the water they get is from the metabolic process of converting oxygen to water inside their cells. 
So aerobic organisms like human beings, like fish, they have a terminal electron acceptor that is oxygen. That's what's taking all those extra electrons and protons away. Other organisms are known as anaerobic. So what they do is their terminal electron acceptor is not oxygen. In the example here, it may be nitrate. And so you may have heard of hobbyists who want to create an anaerobic environment in their tank, deep in their substrate, in their sand, with the hope that this will complete the nitrogen cycle. So the idea here is that there are microbes that take the nitrate. So we breathe in oxygen, they take nitrate, and they reduce it. All right, and so nitrate reduction. Reduction is the opposite of oxidation. If you recall, oxidation, we were taking electrons away from a compound. And that was a source of energy to eventually make ATP. In reduction, we're taking those electrons and putting it back into a compound. All right? So the compound is actually receiving electrons. So nitrate can receive electrons, become reduced, and now we're back to nitrite. It's the exact opposite of what we talked about at the top. That process is called nitrate reduction. Now, other organisms may take the nitrate and eventually convert it into things like nitrogen gas or NO or other nitrogen-based compounds. That process is called denitrification. Now, at this point, once we get to nitrogen gas, we have completed the cycle. And ultimately, in a closed system, that would be pretty cool if we could do that. If we could get this part going where we're dealing with the reduction of nitrogen-based compounds, nitrate to nitrite to nitrogen gas, the nitrogen gas could then diffuse out of the water and we could start the whole cycle over again. That's what some advanced hobbyists are trying to do. And if they can succeed in this, they could greatly reduce the need for water changes. So this was the nitrogen cycle. All right, everyone. So that was the nitrogen cycle. I know it's a lot. And I told you we'd be covering it in a, a decent amount of detail. I hope you learned something new. Again, it's not something that a lot of people just understand the first time around like, oh yeah, I got it, it's totally fine. I've been teaching now for 10 years and you know, it's something that as you do it more and more, you get more uh, familiar with the parts of the nitrogen cycle, whether it's nitrogen, phosphorus, carbon, whatever, sulfur. Uh, but it gives you some more background as to what's actually going on in your tanks. What's happening in there gives you a complete look at the nitrogen cycle. Even if you're just a student, you're not into fish, Hopefully you learned something there. Uh, so if you would like more videos like this where we take a deeper look at what's going on uh, in the aquarium hobby as it relates to water chemistry, definitely leave that in the comments section below. If you did like this video, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.